Once in a small village, a kind couple gave birth to twin girls. They named one Golden Flower, and the other one they named Silver Flower. They were completely happy, and were as close as a person to their shadow. They were inseparable, and were adored by the people in the village. When they were eighteen, they grew very beautiful, and they had many marriage proposals. But neither of them wanted to marry because it could mean being apart. One day, Golden Flower started to have a fever. She had rashes and couldn't rise from her bed. The doctor said that this was a deep inflammatory toxicity. The doctor said that it was too late for her. There was no medicine available that could help her now, and that she should make her peace and wait for death. Silver Flower wept, and Golden Flower told her to leave immediately so that she didn't get infected. Silver Flower said, "I'd rather suffer alongside you. I'm not afraid of death, and living without you wouldn't be a life worth having." Golden Flower got sicker, and Silver Flower fell ill as well. Before they died, they told their parents that they will focus their spirits to become a special flower. To treat their illness, so no one else will need to suffer as they did. After they died, they were buried beside each other. The entire village was heartbroken. The next spring, as the greenery was sprouting, not one blade of grass grew on their graves, except for an ancient honeysuckle vine. Three years later, the vine flourished, and in the summer. There were white flowers that gradually became golden. The villagers remembered the last intention of the girls to use their spirits to become the gold silver flower herb. In Chinese, this is called Jing Ying Hua. This is a very touching story, and this legend has been told to remind people of the importance of cultivating this herb. This story served to solidify this knowledge into the Chinese cultural consciousness, which has saved millions from epidemics several times over the last two thousand years. Yao Guyi, my uncle-in-law, grows this herb on his roof just to play it safe. Traditionally, Jinyuhua, Japanese honeysuckle, is seen as exceptional for treating sore throats, mouth ulcers, and generally any airborne febrile disease. Is there any truth to this claim? In animal and human studies, it has been shown to be antibacterial. Now, being antibacterial is something a lot of herbs claim, but Jinyuhua is ultra antibacterial. Having said that, it does have its strengths and weaknesses. There are some claims on the English internet which say it can take out MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. The truth is that it cannot. In a fight between Jinyuhua, Japanese honeysuckle, and MRSA, MRSA wins. However, in a fight between Jinyuhua and MRSA's cousin, non-methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, Jinyuhua brutally slays it. When it comes to a fight versus Streptococcus, it annihilates Strep. It decimates E. coli. When encountering Shigella dysenteria, Jinyuhua, Japanese honeysuckle. Gives it an uppercut to the throat and then choke slams it onto a rock. It brutalizes Vibrio cholera with a sidekick to the knees. Salmonella typhi flees in horror as Jinyuhua makes the sky black with arrows and pins the Salmonella to the earth. And Paratyphoid pleads for mercy as Jinyuhua gives it no quarter and cleaves it in twain. When used together with penicillin. It forms a superhero team to increase penicillin's effect on drug-resistant Staph aureus. Japanese honeysuckle guards the borders of your skin from fungi such as Microsporum ferruginea and Trochomonas vaginalis. Japanese honeysuckle has anti-inflammatory, anti-pyretic effects, and it increases macrophages to greedily gobble up pathogens. Your macrophages go around in your body; they're white blood cells, and they eat away anything that shouldn't be there—antigens, dead tissue, 
They also help with tissue repair. And this herb helps to increase the number of macrophages available to eat up any pathogens which shouldn't be there. While it's doing this, it happens to also lower the fat which is in your blood. The beautiful thing about this is that this plant is very easy to cultivate. You can grow this at home. There's an herb company in Williams, Oregon called Horizon Herbs, and they sell seeds for Japanese honeysuckle. You're going to want it available. You're going to want your neighbors to have it. Because over the last millennia or so in China, this has put a halt to many epidemics, and it was even involved in stopping SARS. So as we approach this post-antibiotic world, we need this in every garden. The fatality rate for SARS globally was 15%. The fatality rate within China among people who use Chinese and Western medicine together was 3.3%. If you want to increase your odds of surviving by five times, then using an integrated approach is the way to go. So this sounds like a miracle herb. Why don't people just put it in water and drink it? Well, actually, in Chinese pharmacies, they do have Japanese honeysuckle water that people drink while they're ill. But like any antibiotics, this isn't something you want to be taking constantly. So when don't you take it? For women who are menstruating, it's seen as too cold and is traditionally avoided because it can contribute to cramps. Because it's antibacterial, it can lower the metabolism of gut flora. For those with cold sensations in the stomach, it's not appropriate. It's better generally to use in the summer than in the winter, which is convenient because that's when the flowers are actually blooming. And even then, it's best to drink it warm. You don't want to drink it every day, but you do want to have it on hand just in case. Let's say there's an acne flare-up. You can really drop that inflammation quickly. If people have a sore throat or mouth ulcers, it's great. I mean, really, just a day or two, you can get rid of them. But again, this isn't an herb that you take long term. This herb is not seen as good for people who have hepatitis. On one hand, it can lower inflammation. On the other, like any antibiotic, it will beat up your guts over time. This is why it's, today it's not often used by itself. It's used within the context of herbal formulas like yin chao san, which are engineered to be gentler on the gut flora. Jin Yuhua, Japanese honeysuckle, and the formulas that tend to use it as what's called the king herb or the primary herb, aren't the best for every type of contagious disease. If you're getting a cold and it's early stage, you have kind of a stiff neck, you're just starting to get some nasal discharge, maybe you're sneezing a little bit, your throat is scratchy but it's not really painful to swallow, taking this could actually make it worse. In those early stages of a cold, you actually want more of an inflammatory response to kick that cold out. If you're reducing inflammation too early in the stage of how your body is going to fight that cold, then you could theoretically make it worse. So the key marker for taking this is if you see something red on your face, if you're starting to have a blistering, uh, if you're starting to get, say, some herpes outbreak, so you typically only use this when it hurts to swallow or if you're getting some kind of heat rashes or basically just think look for red and look for it being painful to swallow. If these things are in place, then generally speaking, this is the kind of formula family you want to go with. You want to look in the Japanese honeysuckle. It's within the Chinese herb category of herbs which clear heat. That's where you want to look. However, again, if it's... Uh, you just have some kind of allergies or sinusitis, your body will do better to have a minor inflammatory reaction at that time. If your body's feeling cold and chilled, this isn't going to be the best thing to take necessarily. So again, you're going to want to look for red patches, hives, pain in swallowing, thirst, that kind of extreme thirst that you get with a fever. That's generally when you look for Jin Yuhua, Yin Chao San, this kind of family of herbs. Japanese honeysuckle shouldn't be used with enzymes or probiotics because they tend to nullify each other. There's one drug in particular. It's a class of drugs. They're sulfonamides. These interact with a lot of medications and are pretty finicky as far as drugs go. They're like a genius at the office who hates the sun and has no social skills and likes to kick people in the liver. If the generic name of a drug starts with sulfa, it's a good idea to make sure. 
Most of the sulfonamides start with sulfa. That's not to say that everything with sulfa is a sulfonamide. If you have any particular questions, Lon has her PhD in this and is an expert in drug to herb interactions. If you have any specific questions, she's an amazing resource. So just to recap, Jinyinhua, Japanese honeysuckle, something that is great to have around. Some people consider it an invasive species. They won't think that when people start dropping like flies. So make sure that you have access to this. It's staved off numerous epidemics in Chinese history. It's a great tool to have around. If you're worried about it being invasive, keep it in a pot. That's how Second Uncle does. He keeps it on the roof in a series of pots. It's beautiful. It grows easily and it grows well, especially if you have any moisture in your climate whatsoever. It's going to thrive. It's very easy to take care of and just in terms of how much it can serve humanity, I see it as something indispensable for anyone's garden. Thank you guys so much for listening. This one was short, but hopefully sweet. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate us on Stitcher and iTunes. And also take a screenshot when you do that and send it to us. Once a month, everyone who's given us a screenshot will be entered in a drawing. And you'll be eligible to win a product that we personally use. An herbal product that we not only value from a traditional and modern standpoint, but something that we've personally experienced and used. This is the same kind of gift that we would want to give any friend who we meet and we just want them to live a little bit better as a result of knowing us. So that's what we want to pass on to you. This is exactly the same kind of treatment you would get if you just came and visited our clinic or came into our home. We wouldn't let you leave empty-handed. So we really appreciate you being part of this. We appreciate your questions. If you have any specific questions, please send them to botanicalbiohacking at gmail.com. All the best, and we look forward to talking to you next week.